Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by Pilma. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. So Ken, welcome to the podcast, and uh, great to have you. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So tell me about meetings. And okay. how do we, uh, how do we improve our meetings, and how do we get to these million-dollar meetings? Yeah, it's uh, well, meetings. I always felt like meetings sucked, uh, and I think most people think meetings suck that they're time vampires, and they can be if not done properly. And and the two main reasons that meetings are suck is because number one, they're boring, and number two, they're ineffective. Um, so I am also a certified scaling up coach with Vern Harnish, the, the Rockefeller Habits. And they have a system of meetings that I adapted to my companies. And when I started doing this, my business started doubling and the meetings got better. The left hand knew what the right hand was doing. Uh, we got so much more done as far as uh, implementation, uh, execution. And just overall, the team was a lot happier, and they got to be involved more, and it just really takes you to the next level, in my opinion. Excellent, excellent. Now, there are some prerequisites to meetings, right? You, we spoke about this last time uh, that we, we talked uh, offline, which was you have to, because the goal is to, we'd like to double, triple, whatever our, our businesses, or grow our business, even even 10%, 20%, whatever that might be. And we read all these books and we know that meetings are helpful, necessary, but like you said, they become boring and a waste of time. Yet you have, and I remember we discussed this at the mastermind, and you attributed this formula to doubling multiple of your million dollar, many of your million dollar businesses doubled from this strategy. So before we get to the meetings, there's a prerequisite, right? You gotta have the right people, what have you, you were telling me about. Tell me what are the prerequisites to being able to do these million dollar meetings? Well, well, you gotta have the right people in the meeting. What I'm saying is essential people should be there. And of course, in any business, you want as many A players as you can have. And A players are people that are humble, but confident. They're hungry, not just for money, but to grow personally and professionally, and they're, they're people smart. And what I mean by people smart is they're able to get along with people, yet they can disagree. Because a, a key to meetings is, is everybody sits there and just says yes to the leader, then you're not on accomplishment. you got to have a little conflict. And the problem is a lot of people, when you start disagreeing with them, they take it personally and you, you can't. Uh, the old mafia movies, you know, it's, it's just business. It's nothing personal. And so the deal is you want to have healthy conflict. And what I mean by that is somebody's okay for somebody to disagree or point out something. Uh, and then that's the way you come up with great ideas. Because if everybody just sits there and somebody's got an idea, they say, okay, okay. Or if somebody sits there and say, it's not okay, but I'm not going to argue why it's not okay. I'm just not going to do it. Or I'm going to prove to you I'm going to sabotage it. You know, when they're walking out of the meeting, can you believe that shit? You don't want that. You want it in the meeting. And you got to also get people that are introverted. You got to pull them out. Because some people got great ideas, but they just don't want to ruffle the waters or, you know, or, you know. So, I mean, you know. You, you, the right people it, are critical. Yeah, you, you know, and you got to have an agenda. If you don't have an agenda, then why have a meeting, you know? Because right. you want to have an agenda before you go to the meeting because you. And you want to make sure the right people are at the right meeting because some meetings might be more tactical, some meetings might be more strategic, uh, and and you want to start on the time and end and keep it going, and you don't want to go down rabbit holes. And you, whoever's leading the media, meeting, whether it be you, the dentist, or the lawyer, or the doctor, uh, or you could have somebody else. It could be your office manager, it could be your COO, it could be whoever it's going to be. Might be a marketing meeting. You might you might have your marketing director there, but uh, having an agenda also helps them get prepared for it, so they know what what if they need to do some research. Like I had a meeting this morning, and one of the, one of the part thing is 
is for me, I got I kind of like the big picture. I get to talk about the big picture. So I let down and I sit down and I jot out three or four things I'm going to do. And other people are prepared because they know that we're going to talk about this subject matter. So they've got whatever research or people they've talked to, they've got it all down so that we're not wasting time. Well, let me see. I got this over here somewhere. Let me go find this. No, everybody's got their stuff together. And, uh, and you know, and you, you, you run it, you know, you chop, 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 you run through it, and you're not wasting time. And, and we're getting stuff. You know, you just got to be careful. People take you down rabbit holes. Mm. Uh, on some of these meetings, uh, getting you know, off, getting off topic. Yeah, sure. like you, like if you're having a tactical meeting, mm -hmm. you don't want to get into what your big three-year plan is, right? Right. We'll do that. We'll do that at strategic meeting, right? I mean, gotcha. and you might have different people there. I don't want my people, my my, my minions, uh, sitting there dealing with strategy. I, I want them uh, to be talk. I want them in my tactical meetings, right? So, so you 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 gotta start on time, end time, and on time. Have an agenda. And also make sure that you uh, you have the right people in the right meetings. And right. You're not getting off top off topic. Right. Right. Okay. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. And <coughs> excuse me. So there are four levels of these meetings. Tell me right. how that they they play out, or what are the okay. order of those these million dollar yeah. meetings? Okay. Well, one of them, the very simplistic one, is what I call the daily check in. Uh, okay. Fern Harness in Rockefeller Hub, it's called it the Daily Huddle. And really, everybody in your business should be in one of these. You might not, depends on how big you are. Like when, uh, I'm not an expert on dentists per se, but like with lawyers, we have uh, maybe have a pre litigation section, have a daily huddle, maybe the litigation section, have a daily huddle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, or you could have it where, you know, you could have it where all your, uh, however you want to set it. Or you can do it if you're small. Just have everybody come in because they're not going to last over five to seven minutes. Uh, that's the key to them. Because you only. The, the daily huddle is five the to daily seven huddle. minutes. Okay. And, and Dennis fact, are you, very familiar with this concept of the huddle in general. And this format they can add to the daily huddle. Yeah, yeah. So the deal is you, you don't even want to sit down because it's not going to be that long. Okay. So everybody should go in with three things or maybe just two possibly three what was my biggest win yesterday what one thing that i get done yesterday was a bigger win just one what was my biggest priority for today just one and then if i'm stuck on anything what what am i stuck on and the key there is you don't want to deal with what they're stuck in now you want to take it outside the meet somebody in that meeting probably has got it can help them you know, you say, Sally, say, okay, all right, Gene, I'll, we'll take this outside the meeting. As soon as we get over, even if you're remote, you can say, okay, we'll get on the phone or we get on a Zoom meeting. We'll handle this outside. I can help you with this. I got something or I can put you in the right direction. So if you do that, you think about that. That should not take over 30 seconds, right? At tops. So right. unless you, and you really, if you got much over 12 or 14 people in a meeting and you probably need to divide them up somehow into different sections or different divisions or whatever. And, and every business is different when it comes to this. But uh, these these are good. These are good because at least the left hand knows what the right hand's doing. It, it can eliminate a lot of emails. And, and I, think, I think the big deal is it keeps people focused on what their priorities are. And it's good for you as a manager. If you're hearing the same person got the same priority, Three days in a row, something's wrong, right? They're not getting something done. Um, and it also helps people get unstuck, maybe, to, you know, and, and very quickly. And people know if somebody's priority is getting this done today and somebody walks in the office or somebody hits a phone call, they know it's important to them. So they try to, you know, that's a priority for Jane. So let's get this phone call to her or let's get this patient to her or whatever, or let's get this salesperson to her, whatever it might be. Uh, where I see people make mistakes on these is they get to, and I, and you had to, uh, I had this problem. I'll have somebody say, you yeah, know, what, what was your big win yesterday? Well, you know, I just got a lot of things accomplished on this project. That's too vague. You got very, very, you want to be very specific. Or they say, my priority today is I just got a hell of a checklist to do today. Or I've got, you know, like 10 things I got. No, no, no. Or they get into the stuck stuff and they sit there and want to give you a, a a, a war and peace this, this dissertation on what their problem is. No, 
Just tell me very quickly. My problem is I can't get this machine to work. <laughs> okay. Or I can't get up with a certain person I need to get up with. Whatever that is. That's all I need to hear. You know what I'm saying? See, the, right. the D is to keep them, keep them short and keep people reined in and keep them focused. Uh, but that's, and I've seen Vern Hardish on stage bring in some executives and he tried to show them how to do it and they got very broad and he had to reel them in. Um, you've got to be specific. That, that's so very, the big, very quick, very specific. What was yeah. your win yesterday and what is your priority today? Yeah. And, and then if you bonuses, if you're stuck... And that's it. And, and, and actually, it was fun because we talked about this and I started practicing this in All Star. And, and so far, I'm loving it. I mean, it's quick. It's five minutes, these these huddles and and we get what we what's needed and then move on. And it's nice because you get like a little tasting of where your team is at without having to waste hours. So, OK, that's the huddle. And I think a lot of dentists are comfortable with the huddle they do it at some capacity already i think this is a, a good tactic to use from the business sense just to get a general sense of things dennis usually use the huddle to prepare for the day for patients but i think this is good because everybody in the practice is going to have a different role and we can see the front versus the back uh, clinical versus admin what are their priorities what was their win and it can also be subjective i i had a patient and we had this heart to heart and i thought that was a big win or they were afraid of this and this happened and that can be a 10 second win and then you feel it and move on through the day very positive okay so yeah. that's the that's the area of the morning huddle got it, yeah. it makes sense yeah. i think a lot of dentists yeah. can do it and just adjust it there are yeah. three more levels to this what's the next level uh, the weekly tactical meeting, and okay. this is and so the key to here is, you don't not everybody's going to be in this meeting. Okay, okay. you want I call it my inner circle. Some people call it executive meeting. I want my key people, people that I, I call them stakeholders. They might not actually own part of the business, but they treat it like their business. You know, it's going to be like your office manager, your director of marketing. Uh, in law firms, we bring in the intake manager it's a lot of managers or, or people that are key you know um and 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 this is really you do this once a week last 45 minutes to an hour i just got off one before we started here and and basically you go through uh this is just to make sure everything's getting implemented executed off of some of the other bees i'm going to talk about later <laughs> so the one thing we look at is what are our KPIs, what are important, and they're different for right. every business, right? Whatever your two, three to five KPIs are, you want to review those for either the last quarter, the last week, last month, however you do it, you know. We, we look at, we do it from week to week. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to go in and uh, I, I do what we call the open item, um, you know where I get in and talk about the big picture. Uh, and then we, we would check in on what projects we're working on because we've got quarterly projects we're working on, what's going on here, this or that. And then at the end of it, we just kind of say, okay, anybody got anything, you know, because something could come up. So it's really, are we having any problems with the employees? I mean, it's just really about getting stuff done and, and about the running, the day-to-day -day running of the business, right? I mean, you know, what which, which we're calling the tactical area of the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do those every week. I guess you could do them twice a month if you're small. I mean, I've got Pilma that I got. I only got seven employees, but we do them, and I only got four people on my on my, on my tactical meeting. Uh, but uh, we do them every week. But we just find it keeps things moving along. But uh, right. and they. Some mornings they last 30 minutes and some that some mornings they go to an hour. It depends on what we got going on. Uh, but we got an agenda. We get, we get it and they know what they got. They re do the research. Yeah, we can talk about, uh, you know, things in the future, you know, like where are we at on getting this done that we're supposed to have done by the end of the quarter, things like that. So you're yeah, talking I've been, a little bit. I, I've been uh, playing with this a little bit and I think it would be good for us to touch back in about six months to see how we're doing. But I, I, from the last week or so, I've been trying these out, and I call the the first see the first the huddle, the second is the 
I call the KPI meeting, which is similar to what you're what you're doing. And it's it's quick, boom, 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 agenda items, and the um, and we, we do that very quickly. And and it's true as well. People can end up wanting to talk a lot here, and we just want to get those numbers and see where they are. And what's miraculous is. I'm like, wow, I haven't even thought about these numbers in a long time. And every department has different numbers and they're reporting on it. And we're seeing how things are improving, where it's going. They feel more accountable. They are more accountable. And then the last section, once we get past the KPI, we can have time to do the workshopping or the discussions, or you could even call it old business and new business and make sure you're carrying on week to week when, when it comes to that process. So that I, I think that's brilliant. And, and then, so that's tactical. And then there's two more levels. Maybe we can call it operational and then strategic. So, so we have the huddles, which is five minutes a day. You then have the, the, these tactical meetings, which are either KPI or what do you, what do you call them? Ken? We just, we just call them, uh, um, I just call them tactical, uh, weekly tactical meetings, meetings yeah, tactical yeah. weekly meetings. And then now we're moving to the operational level, which is, this is what? Well, the next meeting. Next meeting is more strategic. Uh, strategic. And we okay. do this, what, it's the same people that are in the weekly tacticals, but okay. we're, we do this once a month for like two to three hours. And and basically we get a little bit more in the key, we look a little bit deeper into our key financial metrics, like what percentage of our gross is allocated to staff, to marketing, and see where we're at. You could also say how much, how much per employee, how much money did we make this month? You know, uh, th things like that is kind of interesting because you can kind of got something to gauge. See, you know, because you want to gross or net per employee uh, because sometimes we get too heavy on staff, right? Because we think we need more help. But if you start seeing your numbers go down, then it's, you got you got a problem, so you need to do something about that. You need to, and, and this is once a month, right? Once a month, once a month for like but, two but here, three hours. You say how long is this meeting? Max three hours. Max Most three hours. And, Max, and, and then, yeah. For a, for a dental office, though, do you have the entire team on these meetings? No, or you might be the, talking. No, just the people that you had on your tactical meetings. Your weekly tactical meetings. So, so again, the thinking key, about the key, dental key, office, key, would I key 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 stake key stakeholders key stakeholders. So, so if I'm a dental office or a law firm, I'm not having every team member on the weekly and monthly meetings. You're saying no. so that so for a dental office, this might be your office manager or team leaders would be on the weekly and monthly meetings, correct? Yes. yes. But the huddles, you would have everybody, right? Yeah, and they might might be up, might not be all on the same huddle, but. Most of the time they would, I would think, for most dental offices. Yeah, you have everybody. Okay, so that, that's a good key differentiating is that huddles, you can have everybody. Again, I'm trying to translate this for the dental offices. On the weekly KPI calls or what have you, tactical calls, you'll have your key stakeholders, team leaders, and that's about 45 minutes to an hour. And then for your monthly max two to three hour Yeah strategy meetings you're going to have yeah. your, your key stakeholders yeah and so you want to this is a great question this is one thing we do too at each one of, of the monthly meetings we ask each person what do you think we should keep doing start doing or stop doing wow what yeah, should and, we and keep doing it, stop doing start, 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 start doing, doing. Do yeah each keep, member start keep start stop yeah and uh that's great. And then we also ask people, what are, what are you getting feedback from the staff? I mean, you know, the other, you know, because not, every, not everybody's there. So what are you hearing? Or what are, are, they, are they happy? Are they complaining? Do they think they're getting underpaid, overworked, holidays, da, 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 you know, what's going on? And then also somebody, what are you getting, what are you hearing back from our clients, our patients? What is the feedback we're getting? Are people liking us? I mean, how's our Google reviews going? You know, what's if we're doing, you know, net promoter score, what's that? You know, these are the type of things you want to talk about. Uh, and net promoter score is just the feedback where if you've ever been to a business and they send you a survey, it says rate us 1 to 10. Uh, and it's this formula that you figure out. You can just 
Google it, Net, Pro- Net Promoter Score. Net it's Promoter very Score. Yeah, so the bis- bis- basically you want nines and tens. If you, you know, and then you get you, you do this whole big deal based on a formula, and you if you hit a certain point, then you're doing good. If you're not, you need to work on it. So we, we deal with that. And then also we like to talk about our core values and uh, give us give us some feedback on what you've seen our staff or, or whatever are doing to uh, live our core values, right? Um, and then we have some open eye. And then most of the time I spend about 30 minutes to 45 minutes doing some kind of teaching on leadership. Uh, yeah, I'm a Maxwell, you know, John Maxwell certified leadership coach. Uh, but I really, I, I really don't use it that much with my lawyers. Uh, they think they're all great leaders. So, you know, uh, but some of them do, but, uh, I try to teach them. Well, well know, my how, dentists are, are a little more humble, so they're open yeah, to, yeah, to improve yeah, as leaders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, so I take some of his courses and, and teach them or take a book and make them read it. And we, we talk about it. Um, you know, uh, because every business needs a leader for not a manager, but a leader for every seven, to eight people they got in their business. Oh, that's and, interesting. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what all the gurus say. And it's like Ken Hardison. That's the gurus out there. And so, your job as the leader of your company, whatever kind of company it is, should be to raise up these key people to make them leaders so that they can help make other people leaders. Because the more leaders you got, and I'm not talking about chiefs and Indian stuff, I'm talking about leaders. The job of a leader is to help bring other people up. Okay? That's your main goal. Because there's what they're called a lid. You as the owner of your business, whatever it is, or the leader, Nobody can get higher than you are when it comes to leadership. So you got to raise your elevation. And John Maxwell talks about the you know the five stages of leadership. Uh, you know, and one of them is just because you got the title that don't really mean nothing. And then the other one is because you know they admire you and look up to you. Then the other one's because you're helping them. You know, and then you get to the whole big deal. But it's a whole big deal about that. So I try to instill that in my people that their job should be to help everybody. don't be worried about you seen it in corporate america everybody's worried about somebody getting above them so they try to keep everything to themselves and make other people look bad well that's a bad business model the business model you want is you want everybody bringing everybody up right we all we all it, prop, we all it reminds prop it me it reminds me of good to great and yeah in that book level five leadership which is personal responsibility and and humility yeah. So those are the level five leaders where it's about, yes, bringing people up. It's not about you. That's a good mantra. It's not about me, right? It's about the, right. the mission, the vision and being, you know, and that's one thing that you and I admired about Tony Robbins is he was a tough guy, but he was all about the vision no matter what, right. and beyond himself. So whether you like him or not, he was so committed to that, which was really impressive. So yeah. we covered a three, these three type of meetings, the huddle, the, we then go into the KPR, the, the the tactical meeting, the strategy meeting once a month, the two to three hour meeting. And then the last meeting is a quarterly meeting, which you say is a day long, this meeting. Tell me yeah, about that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, this is the most important meeting. This is where you can really make some gigantic, gigantic leaps. Uh, so number one, it's your same little inner core group. So you get that, right? And you could... You could decide to bring some people in on this that you don't on the other ones. I just keep the same people on every one of them. You know, those two, number two, number three, and number four. Uh, so this one you want to kind of do off campus. What I'm saying is you don't want any interruptions. And you really want to go through, and this is like at the beginning of the year, you should be setting some goals. Vernon calls it the five main things. You know, keep the main things the main things. Don't get to, you know, it might be I want to automate. It might be that I want to go papers. It might be that I want to use more uh, artificial intelligence this year. Whatever it might be, it could be that we want to get our, uh, we want to get, we want to raise our referrals 
from 20% of our business to 40% of our business. Okay, that's a big general deal. So that's your like your five goals or your five main things for the year. But, but if you sit down, what I see a lot of companies do and law firms, and I'm sure it's did this, well, they, they just set like three to five goals for the whole year that's very specific. And then what happens is everybody waits till the last quarter to try to get it done or people get busy, life gets in the way, the business gets in the way, and they just don't get it done. So this is a... Uh, you go through and you look at different things like you, you go back, you look at your core values. Are we living the core values? Do we need to change them? Have they changed? You, you figure out what your brand promise is, what your brand guarantee is, what your BHAG is. You revisit that. And, and BHAG is your big, hairy goal. <laughs> yeah, audacious goal. And that's a 10-year goal. It could be very aspirational. It can be done, but it's going to take a lot of work. Uh, and then we look at the Rockefeller's Habits Checklist. Uh, in that book, he's got 10 checklists with four items. You check off each one, and you can kind of work on whatever one you want to work on, except you always start with the number one, which is you got to have alignment. Everybody on your team, everybody in your office has got to be aligned with your vision, your goals, and your core values. And if they're not, then it's not going to get done, and they're going to stick out like a sore thumb if you really push it. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever your core values are, you know. Um, so we, we review that and go over that. But then the key thing is that we sit down and plan out for the next three months. What are we going to do to try to get, and oh, we'll do a SWOT analysis. But but we only do like the one at the beginning of the year, and then if we got to add to them, and it's your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we take what our five main things are, what our SWOT analysis is, and we sit down and okay, what two or three things can we, projects can we work on to try to help Ken obtain these five main things or try to take advantage of our opportunities or, or deal with our threats? You know what I'm saying? Totally. Or, or work on our weaknesses. So it's kind of a combination. And, and usually, so what I do is something you taught me is workshopping uh, back years ago. Uh, where, And I know you're very familiar because you taught me. I didn't ever heard of workshopping. So I say, okay, everybody write down three to five projects you think we should do. We'll do that. We see which ones are the top. I'm the leader. I can always, okay, overrule everything. But I try to go with consensus unless I think they're crazy. Um, and then we pick those two or three things and then we workshop that and I say, okay, say like we want to increase referrals and somebody say, well, if we, if we did this project here, I think we could at least increase our referrals, you know, by 50%. Okay. We're going to do that. Okay. What tasks are we going to have to do and who's going to have to do them for this to happen over the, over the next 12, 13 weeks? So we lay it all out on a whiteboard. What's got to be done, checklist. One, two, three, four, five. Who's going to do it? And then we start talking about deadlines. And it might have to, might have to go to a vendor. You might have to outsource some of it. Some of it you can do in-house. Some of it we might have to get somebody that's not even in the meeting and have to do it. But the deal is, when we leave that meeting, and we, get either, we, we will go anywhere from two to four. If we got little small projects, we can do four. But if we got big projects, maybe only two. If we just got average three. We agree on those projects. And then we lay out a sheet that says each project, what, who, deadline, when. And everybody agrees to it. And then when we have our weekly tactical meetings, we do a checkup on that. Where are we at on our checklists? For our three main pro, usually we just stay with three, but some year, some months we have done four. I don't know we ever had a month we did. And some things might take so long. Like we did one a couple years ago where we were creating all our processes and procedures for our business. That took six months. That took two quarters. So we laid it out. You know, we we're going to do this. You know, because there's four parts to every business. That's getting business, which is the marketing. There's fulfilling the promise, which is 
with Dennis, I guess, doing the work on your mouth, you know. And then you've got admin, which is bookkeeping and HR, and then you got management. So, you know, we, we broke it down and we worked on, you know, two a quarter, you know. And then, uh, but that's a whole nother, we could talk days on that stuff. But, but I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes you can't get it done in one quarter, so you have to have two quarters. Uh, but you break it up and say, okay, we're going to segment this project into, you know, two quarters. And now and you mentioned that. as well that this is done offsite, off-site. when you do these meetings. Tell me about you don't that. Want, yeah. Usually we just go get a hotel room. Uh, um, you know, I'm very, I'm virtual. So what I do is I bring them in to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where I live. I fly all my virtual people from all over the United States in once a quarter that are in my, on my, I call it my executive team, you know, my, my stakeholders. And we just go, we, we rent a conference room and we, uh, we do it right there in the conference room. Um, right. You know, um, and then, uh, it's a good time too, because we're virtual for everybody to get together and kind of, you know, get, get to know each other. Uh, and then we look at, uh, we lay it out. I mean, you know, and that's that's when the magic happens because things get done. If you're doing your weekly tactical meetings or your bi- bi-weekly, however you want to do them, because everybody's being held accountable. The, the deal is, and you never have two people, you have somebody that's the head of the project. They're, they're the key person responsible because if you have more than one person responsible, nobody's responsible right if, if everybody's but, supposed to do it nobody does it All right yeah yeah so that's that's the key i mean you know um uh, and i can i can tell you and there's a book i read that gave me this idea on this one this was not the quarterly projects was not from scaling up there's a book called the, the 12 week year uh and that's where i got the idea about this I, i've never had a lot of original ideas in my in my life but I read I read a lot I take stuff and, and I changed it up some to fit me because and, they had all and, this sophisticated that, software and then for those that are listening and I'll, and I'll make this warning again don't let Ken's deep charm southern charm fool you this guy's brilliant uh, and just so brilliant um, love what you what you talk about and what you and you bring and, and it's, it's also that humility that that you really give off that you, we don't know. And so we're always looking. And remember what Tony was always teach us is you, you look to model the best. Why try to recreate the wheel? If somebody does it better, do what they do. Right? Yeah. It's our, our ego that gets us stuck. So I, I really admire your commitment to learning and, and putting these two, these things into play. And I'll tell you, everything that I've took that what you've done, I put it into play. You've been telling me for years, do a mastermind group for your dentist. No, they're not going to like it. They're not going to understand it. And I did it. And yes, financially, it's great. But most importantly, it's impact lives. It made it, they really appreciate it. And I think what's, look, the, why are we talking about these things for those that are listening? The idea is that we can enjoy what we do. We can create a life that is what we imagine. And I know so many dentists have a vision that, of course, they want to make money, but they also like to put in great quality care to enjoy their family, to be creative. And some of these these tactics we're talking about, these million dollar meetings can be one of those major processes to help them get there. But ultimately... Yeah, you know- yeah, I'm just going to say, and ultimately, it's it's just to maintain a humility and keep and keep listening, and keep learning. Go ahead, Ken. No, yeah, you know, I'll just say masterminds. If you know, we've been in one together for yeah. what, ten years. Yeah, and I believe I believe I paid I paid I paid Jay Abraham, I paid Dan Kennedy, you know, twenty, forty, fifty thousand a year to be in one, and I can tell you they're worth every dime. You know, I run six masterminds. You and, do. Uh, I just have and, one. Uh, I'm a baby mastermind. Yeah, well, 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 to you. well, I, well, I started. <laughs> I started 13 years ago with one. That's true. And, uh, but but I want to tell you this. This 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 is what makes you feel good about what you do. I was in Vail, Colorado, about a year ago at a mastermind meeting, and uh, I'm walking. We were on break. I'm walking down the street. So it's real beautiful streets, 
and this this woman, a man, stopped me, Ken, is that you? I said, yeah. And this was a lawyer that had been in my mastermind back in the beginning. And he's not in it now because, you know, some of them stay in it forever. Some of them stay in it for three to five years and then they leave. And then they'll come back or whatever. But she she came up to me. She says, Ken, I just want you to know, I never met the way. This is his wife. She says, you're the reason we're set, we're in this vacation here in Bell. She says, "Wow." Well, she said, that mastermind changed our lives. Uh, she says, you changed our lives. She says, you know, I don't know that we would have, that, that my husband, you know, could ever figure it out. He's a great, smart guy, but he says, you just shortcutted it for us and made us to where we, you know, we're living the life. And I, and I, and I got chills and I was walking back and I, I got a little teary eyed. I said, damn. This is why we do this, you know. I mean, we like the money, but money's number two. I mean, you, you change lives. Uh, That's right. You know, and it wasn't just about the money. They were, I mean, it was and it won't. I mean, they were getting some time off to go spend. And it, it wasn't even the lawyer telling me, thank you. It was his wife. Wow. So, yeah, yeah I'm a big endorsement of masterminds. I always have been, always will be. I, I think that they, uh, they're game changers because you learn from other people's mistakes you know, you, you save a lot of money. You learn best practices. Uh, you never know it all. I learn stuff. Every mastermind I do, I learn something. These guys are out there trying new stuff. You know, they have different deals. Yeah, and, and I won't even show up to the mastermind if you're not there. <laughs> 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 but, I, yeah. Ken, I, I so appreciate you being on the program. And uh, I'll, I'll grab you and, and control you to come on more often. It's just you're just a wealth of knowledge and you're always learning. And and like I said, you're, you're the millionaire maker. I think it's a great tool. And I know we've had discussions. You take great pride in helping others make millions, multiple millions. Yeah. And yeah. and these are part of the thousands of tools that you have uh, uh, implemented well into your business. And uh, I'm grateful personally, and I know my listeners will be grateful listening. And so, Ken, thank you so much for coming on the program. All right. Thank you. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.